Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar today. My name is Troy. I'll be leading the session. Uh, before we get going, let's do a quick systems check. Just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, I've got enough responses. Uh, looks like we're up and running. Thank you very much. Uh, so a couple of driving stories yesterday. Uh, I don't know, it, some of you may have been in the technical analysis webinar yesterday. We looked at the fundamental news uh, in, in unison with the technicals, and we had some great breakthrough moves right while we were looking at it uh, yesterday through the, the support and resistance levels, uh, some predictable movements. Uh, while we were saying that that's what we thought was going to happen, then, then they happened uh, in the short term anyways, for, for those who might have been scalping. But uh, today we're, we're going to look at some of those same driving stories. Uh, we'll look at the chart and a couple of the charts that we looked at yesterday. I'll show uh, what happened, how the profits could have turned out, how uh, maybe over leveraging or not having enough flexibility would have got people out before it went the right way. So you can we can use yesterday as a learning experience of it did go the way maybe the fundamental news was pointing. Uh, but it, it first went the wrong way a little bit, then turned and went the right way in the bigger picture through the day. So we had an immediate move yesterday in the right direction, a pullback, and then a move in the right direction again in terms of what the fundamentals were showing. And, and we'll take a look at that as a learning experience of how some may have profited and others may not have been depending on the level of aggressiveness as, you, as you're going after the moves. So I... Uh, as we go forward, some things to keep in mind. Uh, all investments have risk. I think we all understand that. There's no one trade or investment that's guaranteed to have profits, that's for sure. That's why you, you obviously wanna risk manage in a way that makes sense for you to use maybe stop loss, hedge positions, limited exposure, what makes sense for your account in a risk management perspective. Those that, that profit long term and with Arbitrate, it's about maybe a third of traders, maybe a little less. We see the, the percentage there uh, on this slide that don't profit long term. Those are people who get into this and slowly or quickly lose their funds to the spread and the overnight swaps. And they really don't have a system that gives them an advantage. About a third of traders take it professionally, take it seriously, uh, are in the webinars, are learning strategies, are taking uh, steps to become better long term because you have to be better than 50 50 to profit long term otherwise you slowly lose to spreads and and swaps and that sort of thing uh if you're if you're winning and losing the same amount up and down that's what i mean uh and so it's i think it's good news that a third of traders uh profit long term because that's about the percent that probably take things seriously like hopefully you all are and so there's no reason why you can't become part of that positive statistic of those who profit long term. And, uh, you know, Avatrade's a hedging broker. So we don't need clients to lose for Avatrade to profit. That's not how it works. Uh, we've got even tickets in both directions. We profit off uh, the spreads and the swaps fees overnight. Uh, we want people winning. If you're winning, we're hedging outside anyways. We'll win with you and still collect on the spreads. So uh we want long-term traders we want successful traders and and hopefully more and more of you all can also join that third and hopefully growing larger amount of traders who take things seriously and, and profit long term uh as we go forward keep in mind that what we cover is not meant to be financial advisement it is coming from an educational perspective to hopefully give you more tools and more perspective to improve upon your existing trading strategy or to start building a new trading strategy if you're new to things or even if you're old to things and you want to start over uh, and as we talk about risk it's a good time to mention uh, and i know this is repetitive for some of you that come to the webinars often ava protect is a feature available on our avago app uh, if you haven't downloaded the avago app onto your mobile devices uh, do so check it out it's got nice features calculates your exposure for you, your margin requirements, your take profit, uh, potential profit amounts, calculates everything for you as you're setting up the trade. And also on all FX, gold, silver, Ava Protect is a feature that's offered only through that app. 
and and you can protect trades against losses for a flat fee okay for a premium a small premium cost you can protect any losses get added back for the covered time period one day two days three days four hours whatever the options are so you might check that out all right so uh, let's go ahead let's move forward let's take a look at the the fundamental news first and and by the way if we're looking here on our website if you go to trading platforms there's the ava go app ava trade go okay so uh if you go to this web page with your phone uh your mobile device then you download the appropriate app or you can just find it in your app store by searching ava trade go uh the feature that i was talking about ava protect is also explained on our website it's here and uh there's where you download the app and ava protect looks like this right here okay here it shows an example on euro usd protection against losses for one day only 16 dollars or so uh for a, a position size of ten thousand. okay the potential profit could be much more than the premium cost especially what what if it was uh you know nfp day and you could have potential of 50 pips running 100 pips running in in one direction you cover yourself for a small cost in the opposite direction for the whole day even you don't even have to worry about putting a stop loss during that covered period that can get hit and then it goes the right way we've all experienced that during this covered period you don't have to do that you don't have to put the stop loss until the coverage is over if you wanted to put it okay and you can close the trade anytime you want within the protection time as well so very nice feature you can read about it there's a video down here at the bottom of the page you can watch about it as well uh, i i know for some of you again that have been to the webinars i don't mean to come across like i'm pushing this feature i just think it's really beneficial for certain circumstances where there could be a lot of volatility like yesterday with gold okay and i'll show you an example of where it would have helped with gold uh as we look at the charts so uh okay what's the fundamental news today the big stories everyone is guessing about coronavirus economic impacts and specifically what country was affected the most uh with the coronavirus i think it's obvious i'll take a survey what country economy do you think was probably affected the most with the coronavirus yeah everyone's typing china uh i would agree uh hello arif good to see you again uh okay so china obviously that's where the virus had the big outbreak it has spread to uh, many other countries but the biggest impacts have been felt in china and this goes on to say you know the world's second largest economy you know it wasn't just people were getting sick and dying but they had 50 million people on quarantine meaning they couldn't go to work factories couldn't operate proper properly airlines were losing out you know there was there's a huge potential economic impact that hasn't been felt yet maybe and as china's economic numbers come out on the economic calendar and you see the production numbers and the factory numbers and uh, over the next month or two investors are concerned that we could see some negative impact on an economy that already was having problems with a trade war with the US, uh, with their own economic downturn that was occurring, they already had issues. So this, while the virus fear seems to be dying, which is what this headline here says, right? Stocks kind of charged back up as signs of coronavirus spread is slowing. So, you know, we'll look and we'll see. Markets are green today again. Markets were green yesterday. But uh everyone's happy the virus maybe won't you know be a huge horrible pandemic but they're also guessing what impact that might have on the world's second largest economy and trust me people are guessing that maybe it might not be such a good impact okay so it's something to keep in mind moving forward especially for longer term investors what currency would would be affected most by if if you're banking on maybe bad news over the next couple months next quarter because of this economic shutdown that occurred in in China for for weeks at a, at a time here what country's currency would be affected the most by a downturn in China who exports iron ore coal to China the most and it wouldn't be the US Australian dollar good Arif you're right the dollar 
if you meant Australian dollar. Siva, very good. Australia's number one buyer of their number one export is China. Iron ore is their number one export. Coal, number two export. As China goes, so goes the Australian dollar. So those of you that are fundamental traders for long-term moves, you could be thinking, if you're anticipating bad economic news out of China in the coming months, you could start to look at opportunities on the chart, technically speaking, to see is it a good opportunity to think about shorting the Australian, okay? Uh, Rami, good question. What about oil? What do you think happens to demand for oil if the second largest economy in the world has a downturn? What happens to the price of anything if there's less demand for it? Tends to drop. Exactly. So again, the, for those of you that aren't scalpers, that are bigger picture traders, and you say, wow, I think the world's second largest economy could have trouble here in the next month or two, you might start picking your spots. If you believe economic downturn in China, maybe, maybe that drives gold up more. Maybe that pushes oil down. Uh, so this is, these are things to consider fundamentally in the bigger picture. It doesn't mean that's what's going to happen today, right? But it's things to consider in the bigger picture as maybe you're also scalping smaller moves as well, okay? Uh, and we'll talk about both on the charts here in a little bit. So, so this is on people's mind. No confirmation yet of that, of negative economic impact. They're saying everyone's guessing about it, but no confirmation. And you know what speculation? can lead to even before bad numbers come out if everyone thinks there might be sometimes a self-fulfilling prophecy with the movements on the charts so uh what else is happening today on the economic calendar and by the way all of you should check out this sort of stuff before you trade economic calendar breaking stories headlines everything now this is the type of fundamental news okay there's two types of fundamental news and i kind of skipped the slide i apologize one is the kind you can predict exactly what it will be and when it will be. That's this economic schedule, very predictable as to scope and timing. Uh, and then the other type of fundamental news is the extraordinary news. Like we have no idea when the next coronavirus outbreak might be or uh, if there's going to be a tweet from Trump that he's got a trade deal for phase two with China uh getting close or something when when these types of fundamental news stories break out and by the way i made that up he has not tweeted that out as far as i know but uh if something like that happens you have to be prepared for it in your trading strategy because it could happen that's why you always no matter how certain you might be that you might think i don't know australian dollar might drop over the next two months no matter how certain you are in your mind you have to be prepared for the unexpected events as well within your trading strategy to manage risk. Uh, if you want to manage risk, I guess I, I say you have to be prepared. Some people aren't. And then many times they join that 70% or so or 69% that don't profit long term. But if you're prepared for those things, you can handle them. Have pending orders set up to hedge yourself just in case you were dead wrong on your first move. Uh, and and maybe stop loss, trailing stop, things like that as well, okay? And those are all things we can go over. Uh, all right, so looking at the announcements, kind of negative this morning out of, out of uh, for Singapore, not good. Uh, Euro, Euro announcements, industrial production, down, not only down, but down more than expected. That's a contraction of industrial production, already was expected to be a contraction, and it was a larger contraction than, expect, than expected, than the expectations. And so that's really bad. And that's a mid-level announcement. Uh, industrial production, uh, year over year, down even bigger. Month over month down, year over year down. That's kind of bad news for the euro today, okay? So, and that's it. That's what's come out so far. In one minute, uh, we've got, let me refresh this. Maybe it came out already. We've got an announcement coming out. Okay, Italian 12 month. Uh, it's not a major move for this one. It's a low level announcement. We don't really have to be so concerned about that. The two bull head and three bull head are the ones we really wanna watch. So we've got a number of things coming out today on oil. We've got OPEC. We've got uh, crude oil inventories today. So OPEC's talking, just what they say makes oil shoot all over the place. There's going to be movement on oil today for sure, opportunities. We've got OPEC speaking, 
and we've got crude oil inventories today and numbers on crude oil imports, Cushing crude oil inventories, distillate fuel, gasoline, heating oil. These, these assets are going to be moving today, okay, through the day as these things occur, as these announcements occur. So you don't know what the numbers will be. We're not, you know, we're not Nostradamus. So we don't have our crystal ball to tell us, will those numbers be good or bad? But we can prepare on the chart with pending orders, with, with setup to take advantage of breakthroughs for whatever news it might be, to jump on the momentum, okay? So uh, big potential for movement on the USD with Fed Chair Powell speaking again today. He spoke yesterday, and we'll look at what happened when he spoke yesterday. He's the head of the, the, the decision makers in the U.S., the FOMC committee that decides uh, what to do with interest rates, what to do with monetary policy in the U.S., okay? So that's why there were these weird movements on the NASDAQ, S&P 500, uh, et cetera, yesterday, and gold as well, okay? And we'll look at how we, we set up yesterday for that and how you could have profited. All right, so let's go ahead then. Uh, and, and one thing I like to do is do a quick overview of the market, okay? Right here, the futures, okay? These are yesterday's numbers, okay? Kind of flat on the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ. This is today, the futures today. The futures are green, okay? They're up, not huge, but they're up. Positive sentiment, probably because of people being less concerned about coronavirus right now. Uh, as we read in that article. And then we look at what's the fear index doing, the volatility index, down. The VIX index, by the way, you can trade on that on our platform. It moves like gold. Not exactly the same, but very similar. The fear index, what do people buy when there's fear? Gold, right? Safe haven. And what does the fear index, the volatility index do when people are fearful and buying gold? It goes up as well. It would be in the green if there was a lot of anxiety on the markets. So the, the volatility index tends to rise when gold is rising. And right now, what's the volatility index doing? It's dropping over 3% today. That confirms positive momentum on the indices. Okay. So that confirms in our mind futures are rising, volatility index is dropping, positive sentiment. Right now, anyways, right? Till the next headline breaks. But right now, if you're trading with the current headwinds or tailwinds, the tailwinds are blowing up with positive momentum right now on the markets. That's an easy thing to see right here. Okay. And by the way, if any questions, please ask as we go along. Interrupt me. Suggest things. Give input. Uh, you're more than welcome. All right, so let, let's take a look. I'll jump on my demo account here. Let's look at, this is the NASDAQ. This is the last chart I think maybe we had up yesterday. Uh, yesterday we were looking and we saw resistance here, okay? We drew these lines and we said, okay, uh, first of all, we talked about how you could have profited on the way up, right? Resistance level, simple technical analysis, resistance, resistance. Resistance, breakthrough of the resistance. If you had a buy stop ready, would have bought, that's a profit. Resistance, 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 buy stop, pending order, waiting above the resistance, breakthrough candle, it buys, you profit again. Okay. Then we were saying, well, a buy stop might not make sense yesterday. Okay. As we were uh, afternoon time looking because we said, listen, we look at the, the articles, the fundamental news, and they all said that uh, Powell, who was speaking about U.S. monetary policy, was likely to be bullish about how well the economy is doing. And you might think, well, wouldn't that make the Nasdaq go up more? If you look into it a little further, you have to consider, well, what does that mean about interest rate decisions in the U.S.? Part of what has helped the market rise so much, and when I say market, I mean the U.S. indices and stocks, Part of what has helped it have such a long bull run up is the, the feds in the U.S. have kept the, the federal interest rate very low. So banks can give very low interest loans. Businesses can expand and hire more. And so they like low interest rates. And so every time Powell speaks or someone else in the FOMC committee in the U.S. speaks about monetary policy, Wall Street is listening. And 
listening intently to hear, are they talking about maybe lowering interest rates again, keeping them the same, raising them? If, if, the, if Powell sounded really bullish yesterday, which he did, okay, then uh, that would tend to drive the markets down if they think, hey, the low interest rates might be gone soon, right? So we were looking at the articles and they said Powell likely to be very bullish in his comments. We said, hey, this could cause the market to, to at least drop to the next support level. And so we drew this support level here and we said, OK, if you're scalping, if the market pushes down, this would be a spot to take your first profit because here was the resistance, resistance and breakthrough on the way up. So we said on the way down, that might be a spot to take profit or take half your profit or two thirds of your profit, whatever you want. And you could have let the rest run if you wanted to. So uh, that was when the market was still below this resistance. We said set, set either a hedge trade so you can stay in it if it temporarily goes the wrong way or a stop loss somewhere above there in case it goes flying the wrong way, okay? So what happened yesterday? Powell started talking. Uh, Sam, I don't zero myself in as only one kind of trader. I like to scalp. I like some long-term moves. I think it's good to diversify. So I guess my answer would be a diversified trader. Uh, okay, so here's an example of why you don't want to over leverage a position and you don't want your stop loss too close. Let me show you. Yesterday, we were talking about, you see, we drew the lines down. We said this could be the first support level. The market was up here. That from there to the first support is, let's see, 95 80 or so down to 95, 20 or so. So about 60 points, $60, I should say, 600 points drop uh, potential down, okay? A, a full uh, $60 drop per indice in your position, potential profit. And that's what ended up happening here, okay? Those that were able to stay with the move, that didn't over leverage or that hedged it, when it finally dropped, it dropped all the way to that support where I probably would have taken my profit and it actually broke that support. You could have gotten a bit more out of it, okay? Uh, now the question is what happened here, okay? Those who took such a large position that your stop loss had to be really close or else you felt like you were risking too much, you got stopped out, then it dropped and then you missed the big movement. OK, that's a mistake many traders make in the bigger picture. We were right. Powell's statements brought the market down a significant amount to that next support level. In the small picture, you could have still lost if you took too big of a position and we're trying to be too perfect, not being patient with your stop loss. OK. Another way to handle this, to avoid getting stopped out before it went the right way. Type yes if you know what a hedge trade is, or type no if you don't. An alternative to a, to a stop loss, to avoid getting stopped out with this breakthrough before it went the right way, is a hedge trade. And I'll show you. I'll show you. It looks like 50-50 with those who responded uh, in terms of who knows what a hedge is and who doesn't. Okay, so let's go back in time. Let's say it's yesterday, okay? Let's say it's yesterday. And we were setting up our sell position before Powell spoke, okay? Let's say we're setting up our sell. It's near the resistance, and you're, you're thinking it's going to pull down to this first support level down here, okay? But you don't want to risk too much. If it, if it breaks the resistance, you're thinking, man, I don't want to keep losing. So what you can do is if you think in the bigger picture, it will come down because a lot of times what happens when Powell or these monetary people are talking, they say one thing that's opposite of what the big story is going to be as they talk further. And that's what Powell did yesterday. He started out by saying, well, we're not sure of the effect the coronavirus might have on the markets and the markets like that. Why? They said, ooh, he's not gonna lower, in he's not gonna raise interest rates if he's concerned about the coronavirus, right? So he started out his speech talking about concern on the market, concern about the effect of the coronavirus, and boom, NASDAQ shot up, broke the resistance, because the implications of that is, hey, he's not going to cut back on 
low interest rates yet if he has concern about the markets. So boom, it went up. But then the articles were right that we looked at. He did talk very bullish after that. In fact, he went on to say the unemployment rate is so low, it's lower than we thought it could be. He, and he went on about how strong the economy is, and he doesn't think there's any concern that, that, that the, the bull run of the market has to end. All of these things lead investors to think, wow, he's not going to lower interest rates anymore. In fact, maybe he'll raise it, right? If that's what people are thinking, what happened then? Soon as he started talking about how great the economy was, down went the NASDAQ, exactly what we expected. But if you're trying to be too perfect and you had your stop loss just above the resistance, you took the small loss and you missed the movement. Okay, Mis simple mistake that many traders make, not trusting the bigger movement and getting out too early, okay? The way to handle that without having to risk all the way up that much loss is to hedge it before it gets that far. And so what kind of pending order could I have had activated instead of my stop loss right there, I could have had a hedge trade to buy for the same size as my sell. What kind of pending order would have bought and covered any further losses on my sell? kind of pending order buys from a higher point as a backup in case I was wrong on my sell. If I took a market sell underneath this resistance, like we were thinking maybe yesterday made sense, it breaks the resistance here. I get out on a, on a buy automatically with my pending order. That's a buy stop. Correct. Sharon, Arif, others. It's a buy stop. So, uh, this is an alternative. Don't put a stop loss on your sell. If you understand in the bigger picture that you believe it could spike up, but I still think it'll come down because maybe you understand from experience that when the, the head of monetary policy talks, sometimes it goes one direction before it goes the other. And if you believe from all the research that we did before he talked that, hey, eventually he's gonna be bullish in this statement. And if you believe that would bring the market down temporarily, then uh, hedging makes more sense than a stop loss. So you don't get stopped out on the spike. Knowing that it could be volatile when he first starts talking, you, you set up a hedge instead, and then boom, eventually goes the direction you expected. And you're still in on the sell because you only put the stop loss on the hedge trade, not on the original trade. Okay, so let me walk you through how it would be. Uh, market sell. Here, it's on the resistance now, right? So let's walk this through. Let's say I do NASDAQ sell, okay, for, I don't know, half a lot, whatever size would be right for you. Let's say I sold. And by the way, I'm not telling you you should sell right now. I'm giving you an example. So sell, boom, I'm in on the sell. And I say, well, if it breaks the resistance, I don't want to lose anymore past, you know, this high point up here. So I say, listen, at this price, I'll hedge it if it gets that high. Or maybe I say I'll only hedge if it breaks past yesterday's high, which makes more sense to me. So if it gets past these wicks, instead of having a stop loss, if I believe in the bigger picture, even if it goes higher, that it'll come down, then I would say, okay, let me do a hedge trade. I'm not putting a stop loss on my sell. I'll only maybe put the take profit on my sell where I want to take my profit. And I'll do a hedge trade, pending order, buy stop, okay? Entry price on a buy stop is higher than the current price, 96.13, buy at 96.13, and I'll do a trade size of half a lot also. That way, if it breaks through, now I'm breaking even if it keeps going the wrong way. And once it comes back down, my stop loss on my hedge will be if it goes back below the resistance and comes back down to the current price of 95.80. So I will get out of my hedge if it goes back into the downtrend I expect in the bigger picture place. Okay, now I'm protected in the negative direction. And if, if it did this, triggered my buy stop, and then came back down, it would have closed my buy stop down here. And then the rest is all profit. 
until I take my profit on myself. Any questions on that or comments? So this would have worked yesterday perfectly. Instead of getting stopped out when it broke the resistance, if you knew, hey, Powell's still talking for 20 more minutes, you could have still been in on it. And then when it came down, it closed the buy stop, closed the buy position, and boom, you're still in on the sell for profits. Matt, I would hedge to profit. You can hedge to break even. I'd be hedging to profit. The distance, for example, if this was yesterday, the resistance was here, okay? I would have gotten in maybe here with my hedge. So I only lost. I only lost. I didn't lose all the way up to here. I was breaking even from here to here. I only lost from my, my market sell to the entry on my buy stop. I lost that distance. How much did I profit once I closed the hedge on the way down? I profited three times as much, right? So the amount I lost on the hedge, the distance between my market sell and the entry on my buy stop, that's the amount I lost. When I closed my hedge, I started profiting. The hedge would have closed if it broke back below the support, which it did. And so from right about here down was all profit. I made back what I lost, the distance between my market sell and my hedge, and then made profit after that. Does that make sense, Matt? Now, what if, what if it kept climbing? At some point, at some point, if this would have kept climbing and I've got it hedged, the next time I think it's ready to drop, I can close my hedge manually. Now I profit on my hedge and now I wait for it to come back down with my sell. And if that's the case, if this would have entered, opened my buy stop and kept climbing, and let's say it was still climbing, I'm waiting for it to form resistance. Then I'll close the buy stop with a nice big profit. And then if it even pulls back halfway, even if my sell is still in the negative, I'm in overall profits. If I made 80% of it back on the way up on my buy stop, and all I lost was the distance between my sell and the entry price on the buy, I just made a ton of profit if it kept going up and I took a profit on the, on the buy stop. And then now it pulls back down halfway. I could close the sell at a loss, but that trade set is a profit. And that's this is where professional trading systems can profit and beat the market, even when you're dead wrong on the first move. In this case, we weren't dead wrong. It was just a timing issue. Powell started talking, it spiked. Everyone heard what he said and down it went, as we thought it would yesterday. Now, uh, you could profit even if this would never have come back down here and just kept going. You can profit on the trade set. Once it forms new resistance, you can take profit on the hedge, set up another hedge above that one. And if it even comes halfway back down, you're in overall profit. You can even close the original thought at a loss and profit on the trade set. So you have to think of it like chess. The first trade, maybe that's your pawn. Maybe you win with the pawn, maybe you don't. But you already know what step two and step three and step four will be to, to force the profit on that trade set. Okay. But you got to stay on top of it, right? You got to stay on top of it. Any questions on that? Yeah, you can. You can end up profiting more because it went the wrong way, because you're taking profit at certain levels on the way up in this example. Uh, if it were to continue going the wrong way, eventually you're going to get a pullback. And now if your original thought ends up being right and actually goes into profit, wow, you're, you're in huge profit then. But you don't even need that original trade to profit in the end. You just need to make back some of it. And eventually it will pull back, right, at, at some distance. Okay, so uh, fundamentally speaking, the markets were green today, right? Fear was dropping. Do you want to sell off of this resistance point today? Do you think it's going to do this like it did yesterday and, and fulfill what we thought? Do you think this will happen today with today's green market and low VIX volatility index? Is it more likely to break this resistance and go test 
this resistance? Or do you think it's more likely to drop again? Based on the fundamental news, think about it. Markets are green. Volatility index was down over 3%. Headwinds are happy about coronavirus maybe not being a big deal anymore in terms of the markets in the short term. On China in the long term, maybe a bigger deal. But in the short term, there's positive momentum. We saw it. So do you want to trade down from this resistance level when the fundamental news is telling you the opposite? Okay, David. We see what the fundamental news has done. It's recovered from yesterday's drop. Where did it get to yesterday when Powell first said, uh, listen, we have fears about the effect of uh, the coronavirus. It went all the way up here. Now there's no fear. We're getting a recovery. It's interesting to see what might happen. Again, if you think it'll break the resistance, what kind of pending order do you put above this resistance right here? You could do a quick scalp. If it breaks the resistance, you get in here at this breakthrough, and your take profit could be at this next resistance level here. That doesn't look like a big distance, but it is. That's uh, nearly $30 rise on per indice from here to here. So that would be a nice little scalp. If this breaks the resistance, a buy stop could get you in for a potential profit up to the next resistance level, okay? So I'm not saying you have to do a buy stop. I'm saying the fundamental news says maybe that makes sense. And from my experience, the more often you do your technical entry points like we're looking at right now, you do proper technical analysis. If it breaks the resistance, technical traders would say buy anyways. Now, if the fundamental news also says markets are rising and should rise that the fear is down then now you have two reasons to prepare that buy stop right if you believe hey fear will come back markets will drop uh then you you technically speaking it's at the resistance right now you could sell you could do a market sell right now i don't like trading personally against the headwinds against the direction that the fundamental news tells me to trade i like to go with the fundamental news so if you get in on a breakthrough and it, and it and it climbs great could it break through open the trade and then some headline breaks that's bad news and it breaks back down of course that could happen remember there's two types of fundamental news the buy stop idea on the breakthrough is based on the fundamental news we already know positive momentum on the market today great go with what you already know how do you protect yourself in case this opens and then the other type of fundamental news breaks, the unpredictable kind, and there's some headline that makes the movement reverse after you got in on the buy. That's where you have either a stop loss down back below the support, just in case things reverse with some breaking news after you get in on the buy. Uh, odds are that won't happen, right? Those sort of big breaking news headlines don't happen all the time. They happen less than they do. Uh, I mean, less than they don't, right? Most of the time we don't have unexpected breaking news, but if it happens, you, you have to build that into your trading plan. So go with what you think. If you think breakthrough by stop with the current fundamental news, great, set it up. You should be right more than you're wrong doing it that way. If the news breaks and everything swings after your trade opens and the news changes and, and the movement changes, Back yourself up just in case, stop loss, hedge trade, something that makes sense to protect yourself on the downside. Any questions or comments on that? Okay, good. Now, what about some other assets? We looked at some other things yesterday as well uh, that were affected by the movements. How about gold? Okay, here's the 30 minute candles. Listen, fear is down today, right? We've been talking about it. Look, look at the opportunistic spot this that gold rose up to. We're looking at the current move. Yes, that's a live price, GMT time. So uh, 
we're looking at a movement that reached a resistance level here. Okay, this general area, right? Let me draw a line. Right about here, okay? Support, support, tested, back up, support, and up. This was the breakthrough move here. Look at the size of the candles. That's a true breakthrough. Came down, so this becomes resistance. And look where this stopped. Tested it and, and reversed right at the old support, which is the new resistance. Go If you're trading with the fundamental news today, right? If you Siva, we'll try and take a look at Tesla. If you're trading with the fundamental news, this was predictable and you should sell right now, right? What, how, how, how far down was the, the fear index? Over 3%. Guess what? Gold is up right now. If, if gold tends to follow the fear index, we already saw the fear index is down three and a half percent or so. This is an easy move to go with fundamental news that shows fear is dropping. What happens to gold price if fear is dropping? Tends to drop, right? So there's no guarantee this will keep dropping, but the whole point is trading is not guaranteed, but it's all about potential. And right now there's a potential for gold to keep dropping. And there's a reason why in the, I don't know, 15 minutes we've been going already or 45 minutes i should say looking at the time wrong gold's been going the direction we said it should be going the whole time we've been talking okay so yeah about the fear factor okay and let's go to 15 minute candles you can see this better here's the reversal off the resistance it's dropping uh that could be something you'd be interested in and, and then your stop loss might be above here in case in case things swing right uh what's the fundamental news that's telling us gold should maybe drop here the vix index s p 500 vix that's on our platform too you can trade on it it's down now it's down even more down over 3.6 percent okay headed towards four percent maybe the volatility index otherwise sometimes known as the fear index is down huge today over three and a half percent down that means fear is down. That's why the markets are green and rising. What happens when the markets are green and rising and fear, volatility is down? Gold tends to drop, okay? Again, that could swing in an instant, right? So back to the chart. Remember I said prepare for both, what you know and what you don't know. So what we know is gold has a reason to drop right now. You could do a market move if you like that idea. You also know a breaking headline could happen at any time to screw that up, to mess that move up. And if that happens, you either have a stop loss up here or a hedge trade up above this resistance to cover yourself on a hedge until it comes back and drops like we did in the NASDAQ scenario. Or you just have a stop loss and a buy stop because you say, listen, if if it breaks the resistance, I'm out on the sell and I'm in on a buy. That's fine. You could have a stop loss here in a buy position. Okay. Now, I tend to use the bigger picture fundamental news to create a situation where I might hedge my initial thought rather than a stop loss. So if this broke and went up, I probably would have my sell position hedged because the bigger news today was positive and might push gold down through the day. Note, I said through the day, just because I might be selling on gold today, going with today's fundamental news, doesn't mean I don't also have longer term positions on gold as a buy. Because what did we read about what might happen with China because of the coronavirus in the coming months? Could be bad news for China coming up with economic numbers because of the coronavirus. So even if in the short term gold's dropping and you're scalping through the day, doesn't mean in the bigger picture you can't believe that gold will go up for the long-term moves, especially if China has bad numbers in the coming months, okay? So you can be trading on both at the same time, long-term moves, scalping moves in the opposite direction even, on the short-term movements, daily movements. Okay, I think this is a good place to stop. Any questions, comments? 
Oh, Tesla. Someone wanted to look at Tesla. Boy, have they been doing well uh, in the bigger picture. Not every day, obviously, but uh, they've been doing well in general. Let's find Tesla. There's Texaco. Nike. Tesla had huge numbers. They really, they've, they've done really well of late. Uh, let me do maybe hashtag TE and find it. One second. There's Tesla. If anyone doesn't know, that's a trick. As you're pointing at an asset anywhere in the market watch, start to type what the asset starts with. Type the first three or four in the name, and it'll take you right to it. So here's our hashtag Tesla. Okay. First of all, you notice, why are there gaps every day? Why are there gaps? And we didn't see that on the indices. Why is the price gap so much? From Friday to Monday, right? Or from, uh, from one day, I should say, from one day to the next. The market's closed. They're not 24 hours on the stocks. Our stocks don't run uh, 24 hours like uh, the indices are doing. Okay, they're not traded on the futures. Futures run 24 hours a day, that's our indices. The stocks open and close if it's a US stock with the US market, okay? And between the close one day and the open the next day, the price can change as there are futures contracts being bought and sold when the market's closed, which changes the price when the market opens, okay? So you get gaps like this. And by the way, what a strategy to trade, huh? The movement gapped up. What happened that day? Went up, right? If you're trading the gaps, that's a technical analysis strategy. Maybe a talk for another day. Gap up, trade up, right? Gap up here, trade up. Here, price gapped down, trade down, right? Pretty simple going with the momentum of the day. You can also trade to see if it will fill the gap. It doesn't work every time, right? But uh, first trading to see after the price opens and gaps, if it goes backwards to refill the gap, which you see it gapped down, went back up some, you could trade on refilling the gap if it starts a reverse trend. If it breaks into the gap, you can trade, fill the gap, take your profit on the fill, and then go with the momentum of the day in the direction of the gap. Okay, this is a strategy. We could do it maybe next week in the technical analysis strategy. Uh, you can profit on filling the gap. If it just breaks to another high or low and never fills the gap, then you can go with the direction of the gap. Uh, very, very effective uh, strategy to do, both filling the gap and going with the momentum of the gap uh, in the direction that it gapped in the bigger picture for the day. Works many times if you, if you manage it correctly. Yeah, exactly, Matt. Big banks, hedge funds, you name it, can invest pre-market. And so it moves the price when the market opens, okay, on these stocks. Okay, so uh, what else? This one gapped and filled the gap, okay? Gapped up, filled the gap. If you just saw it break back into the gap, you trade down, there's your profit on filling the gap. Only You would only buy if it broke back into an uptrend, which it never did. So that one didn't keep running. It was the end of the week, maybe. Or or no, actually, this was the end of the day yesterday. Okay, so today didn't start yet, right? Uh, those of you who are asking to see Tesla, why is it not moving? Because the US market's not open yet, right? Tesla's not moving. So the question is, what do we think will happen? Why do you think Tesla came all the way up here? Okay. Was good news or bad news for Tesla that brought Tesla up after their earnings numbers and everything came in? Uh, Tesla jumped up. If we had time, I would go back and show you the earnings numbers. But uh, trust me, they had some good news. They've improved their production capabilities. That was their only problem. It was good news. Okay. This came back down and leveled out. Okay. We now have uh, a support level down here. Okay. Support, support, up gap, support, 
did the good news evaporate for Tesla? Did their good numbers all of a sudden go away? Or do they still exist? From last quarter, they still exist, right? The good news is still there. So uh, if you're asking me on Tesla, what do I see potential, both fundamentally and technically? I see a high ceiling that's already been established. I see a nice support level that's backed up by good earnings numbers, okay? And so I see low risk for a stop loss down here on Tesla below this little support and a much larger potential gain to go back to the already established high. Somewhere up here, I might be looking at a take profit before that resistance, somewhere there. I also tend to take partial profit sometimes. Where would be a good spot maybe to close half your position if it climbs and you're profiting on a buy? Right at this gap. You see it gap down? Just before that gap, I might take 50% profit. That's halfway up to the ceiling. There's a gap there. That's a good reason maybe to preserve some of the profit. And then you see if it will run the rest of the way with maybe a trailing stop on the rest, right? Adding a trailing stop is always helpful once you're happy with the level of profit you've gained. Uh, Siva, does that help you with Tesla? Okay. And again, listen, I'm not telling you Tesla has to go up and you should buy. This is a fundamental webinar. We're talking about fundamental news. Tesla's fundamental news was pretty good. And we see also technical analysis wise that it makes sense. And from my experience, traders that combine the fundamental news with good technical entry points, you're not going to win every trade, but you should end up winning more trades than you lose. And in the end, Hopefully you can join that 30% or so of traders with Avatrade that profit long-term. Ah, okay, we'll end there. How do you do trailing stop? So let's use the current uh, position that I opened, okay? Here's my NASDAQ move I was using as an example. Uh, right click, you see trailing stop, okay? Trailing stop, it's a stop loss that moves with you. So if I say I want a trailing stop 200 points back, okay, great. This, if I put a trailing stop 200 points back and this is climbing, climbing, I'm in profits, I'm in profits. If at any point it goes back 200 points, it will close. The, the, the stop loss follows you to the high water mark. So as it goes up, 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 as long as it doesn't go back 200 points, it keeps going, doesn't go back 200 points. Once it drops 200 points from the highest uh, high water mark, boom, it closes and preserves the rest of the profit. Okay. Also, let's say I, before I put my trailing stop, maybe I want to do a partial close. If I'm happy with my profit and I say, okay, let me go to market execution. I right clicked over the trade, market execution. I'm going to close half my trade, 0.2 five you'll see it closes here close it, it recognizes what i typed i closed half my trade now i could have closed any portion i wanted now instead of half a lot open i only have a quarter of a lot okay i could take part of my profit let the let and then let the rest run with my trailing stop 200 points and so uh how do i know the trailing stop is there right click there, you see it, it, the check mark is on 200. I know the trailing stop is active. Uh, a fair warning about trailing stops. If you lose connection from the computer you're using to set the trailing stop, it disappears. You have to stay logged in or else because the trailing stop is only client side, it's not server side. So you might back up your trailing stop with a regular stop loss somewhere further down, okay? Just to be safe. All right. Uh, if if not any more questions, I think this is a good place to stop. Jitesh, uh, what time chart do I recommend? It depends whether you're scalping smaller candles, five minute, one hour, uh, 15 minute. If you're a bigger term trader, longer term moves, you might look at also four hour, one day, one week candles. Uh, in the end, I, I look 
at all of it before I make a move, whether it's short term or long term, because even your short term moves, if you look at the one day candles and you say, wow, uh, not only is it a resistance point on my 15 minute candles, but it's also a resistance on the one day candles. Now you give more uh, respect to that resistance level or support level if it also exists on the bigger candles. OK, the longer those price levels were there, the more significant they are. So I call that taking an outside in or an inside out look, looking at the small candles and the larger candles. It's always smart. OK, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll stop here until next week. Uh, good luck with your trading. I hope you make lots of profits and uh, just keep an eye on that fundamental news. It should help you quite a bit. Bye for now.